This episode of Bright Hearth is brought to you by Indigo Sundry Soap Company, GM King's Coffee, Stonecrop Wealth Advisors, and by our supporters at Patreon.com. People wonder why the novel is the most popular form of literature. People wonder why it is more read than books of science or books of metaphysics. The reason is very simple. It is merely that the novel is more true than they are. Literature is a luxury. Fiction is a necessity. G.K. Chesterton. Welcome back to Bright Hearth, everybody. Brian and Lex, you're here for our last episode of 2023. And what a year it has been. What a year it's been. We got an Alfred this year, right? Alfred, who is right here in front of me. Alfred, say hi. Alf on the shelf. And say hi, Winnie. He just licked the microphone, but he didn't talk anyway. <laughs> Winnie, do you want to say hi? Say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> That's the best we're going to get <laughs> from our two little chickens here. And, um, man, thank you guys so much for supporting the show through 2023. We hope that it continues to bless you in the year of our Lord 2024, that you guys had a great year as well. And, man, speaking of 2024, we have some exciting news about something coming up in June. Oh, I was like, we do? Like, he's like, what? Am I pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have our second annual New Christendom Press Conference coming up. And this time, there's going to be a couple things particularly that I think Bright Hearth listeners are yeah. going to be excited about. Number one, it is going to be June 6th through the 8th. You can head to newchristendompress.com, and there's a conference tab there. All the details. A couple things about the conference. It's, it's called Building Christian Burrows. Uh, and we're talking about building Christian communities in the spirit of King Alfred. We're going to be drawing a lot of lessons from history. Dr. Joe Rigney is going to be speaking there. Dr. Stephen Wolf. I will. Uh, we'll have a lot of great, great folks there. But a couple things. So number one, this is going to be the most affordable uh, conference we've put on so far for families. So we got a bigger venue so that we're able to make like, man, kids 11 to 17 have a small cost, but kids 10 and under are totally free to come. We want you to bring the whole family. And the tickets are going to be the cheapest they ever will be here in the month of December. So as you're hearing this, like mid-December, make sure you jump on, grab some tickets there. I'm going to be doing a concert with some of my psalms and hearth songs and even music that's not released yet on one of the evenings. And what else do we have, babe? Did you say the singles mixer? That's exactly singles right. Mixer. Yep. We're Brian a singles and I are mixer. doing a singles mixer. Yes. And the <clears throat> singles mixer is just aimed at single adults. Basically, you have to be over 18 or 18 and up. And we're just trying to help connect singles together and give a context where they can get to know each other, like-minded Christians here at this conference. <laughs> this is going to sound funny, but but it's it's actually based. So the, the men for the singles mixer there's a fee, it's oh. $50. <laughs> Ladies, your ticket's a dollar. So <laughs> sorry guys. It's just your first opportunity to prove that you can afford to pay for dinner. Does that make, you know? Yeah. yeah no, it, it makes, makes sense. It makes total sense. So. Yep. So we've already got great I mean we've only had tickets open for a little bit and we've got, you know, dozens of people already signed up and we've got folks signed up for the singles mixer as well. So Join us for that. I, I think it's going to be a great time. The conference overall is just a wonderful time to get to know folks from across the country who are like-minded. Also, to meet us here in Ogden. We'd, we'd be delighted as well at the conference ends Saturday. We'd be, of course, delighted for you to stay with us and join us on Sunday morning as well for a service at Refuge Church. But, yeah. Oh, and I was also told to pass on one thing from uh, Garrett, Indigo Sundry Soap Company, that we told you guys about. We've done a long-term partnership with them. They're making the soaps without seed oils or anything like that. And uh, he showed me a picture of all the orders that have come in from you guys. And it like touched his ceiling. Oh, that's cool. So like bars of soap. He had bars of soap. Up. That's cool. like that's it awesome. was wild. So and people are loving uh, what they've got, sending in emails and messages. So keep supporting them. We've got links in the description. And there is a code now. If you use code BRIGHTHEARTH, all caps, no, no spaces, Right hearth, ten uh, percent off your whole order. So go check them out. But that said, um, we got some fussers over here, huh? Oh no! I just don't like think he likes being sat upon. Does he not, <laughs> Alfred? What's the problem, my guy? He's okay. Okay, what are we talking about today, babe? Books, books, books. Books, books, books. Books, books. books. We're gonna close it out in Sylvie fashion. Twenty twenty three. We're gonna be talking books. 
took me a very long time to find my thing. I've been using Goodreads for years, and I still couldn't find it. You know, that surprises <laughs> me. Zero um, percent. <laughs> Found it. Based on what I know <laughs> about your technological skills. But why don't we start with talking, babe, about just how you and I are different in, in reading. What makes us different in the way that we approach the noble tome? You work. I don't. Uh huh. Well, you do work, <laughs> but yeah, I, I have know more time mean. to read in different ways than you do. Is yeah. what I've realized. Yeah, true. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I like to read very widely. Mm -hmm. Yes, very widely. Are you a rereader? I have been as of the <laughs> last like two or three years. Uh -huh. I've reread a book once. No, I have. I really <laughs> I'm have. Just I and I even have a couple of books that I want to reread in my thirties now that I like read them in my 20s and they were a big yeah. deal. So I'm kind of working through those. Yeah, Lexi's a broad reader. She's reading Shakespeare and then Gone with the Wind and then, uh, you know, probably a Western novel. And then, like, I'm trying to think of the books I've seen her read in the last month sitting in bed. And I am a chronic rereader. I love to reread some of my favorites like uh, Lord of the Rings, Silmarillion, The Hobbit. <laughs> I mean, that's a diverse group of books right there. I also read like 10 books at a time. Yes, I cannot do that. One book at a time. I read two one books. One or two books. Yeah, like up to two. And you know, I've always been that way. I can remember being a little yeah. kid. I had three books. I'd, I'd read one chapter from one, go to the next, one chapter, go to the next one chapter, and I'd start over I again. absolutely can't do it. All day long. I don't know why. I, I just don't know always how she have. does it. <laughs> yeah. I have had to do that for different seasons, like schooling and things like that, doing, okay, got to read 15 pages of this book today. But I have always been the kind of guy who I'm reading one book and I'm usually listening to one book. And, and these days I listen to more books by volume. I finish probably three to four times more books listening than reading the book on the page in front of me these days. And Lexi just is not as much of a book listener, though you have gotten into some listening this I year. I think I'm listening last to couple. three different books right now. Three or four. That is astonishing right to me. I do not, <laughs> guys. I don't know how she does that. Like, how do you keep track of where you're at in all of them? What do you mean, like a bookmark? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mentally. I uh, so in I studied literature in college though, so I had to read tons of different books at a time. I can do I it. I have done that. I suppose. I just don't understand. It feels it's not pleasurable. Really. I love it. The other thing is, yeah, no, <laughs> I get our that brains are wired differently. Totally. And it's just because you're so smart. Is there, let me ask you this. What was the worst book you read this year? Like what book did you, were there any books you didn't even finish that you were like, like well, 20 probably. I, I mean, other than the 20, you haven't finished because you're still reading them, but you oh, just said, like, I'm not going to finish no. this. Um, not this year. I have okay. had that happen before, yeah. yeah. but I think I'm so much pickier now. The, in the yeah. past, when that happened, it was like, oh, I'll just read this low-quality book because someone told me to, and then I'll start it. And I'm like, I can't do that. But I don't really yeah. do that anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I don't think I had any that I didn't finish. Yeah. Here, buddy. You want to see that? <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I had some books this year that I read and didn't enjoy reading, but kind of had to. Okay. Like, especially researching for the next season of the King's Hall podcast. We're doing a lot of history on Christendom 1.0, and I wanted to read some things from non-Christian historians to kind of get a feel for how they handled talking about some of the events of Christendom 1.0, how they handled Constantine, and um, some of my favorite books this year were history, but um, I read some of those books that were absolutely a slog just because I was constantly like, no, Constantine was awesome. What's wrong with you? Kind, oh, of, kind of thing. okay. But they were still informative. I learned a lot, but they were they were more work than anything. How do you want to talk about your books? Are there any first places you want to start in talking through your favorite books or different categories? I of thought books? you said you had categories. So no, I, I do. Really I do. I just about it. before I jump in and start really... steering you left and right, I want to make sure that I'm that I'm not running over you when it comes to no, not that okay. I can think of. <clears throat> all right, then let's talk about. First of all, I do actually want to follow up and ask: What books do you reread? What are some books that you have reread or that you would reread? Um, Puritan literature. Uh -huh. I've read reread that a lot. Which um, ones uh, in particular? Uh, Meekness. I've reread On Christian Love by 
Is meekness the quest for meekness and yes. quiet? Yeah. Matthew Henry. Yes. Is what's it called again? The quest for meekness and a quiet, quiet spirit. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yes. Okay. Um, Christian Love by Hugh Binning. I've read that multiple times. I know there's another Puritan one that I've read multiple Burroughs. times. The I rare think jewel I have Christian re-read contentment. that one a few times. Uh-huh. Um, I almost yearly reread Nate Wilson's Death by Living. Yeah, great book. And almost yearly reread Rachel Jankovic's books on motherhood. Yeah, I've reread those a lot too. As a Christian, it's common to feel uneasy about where your hard-earned money is invested especially when the S&P 500 is full of companies that are actively supporting causes that go against your faith. Stonecrop Wealth Advisors is here to help. Stonecrop offers faith-based portfolios to help you direct your hard-earned investment dollars away from such companies and toward companies that are having a positive impact on society. They also offer comprehensive financial planning to help give you peace of mind about your future that these investment dollars support. Stop investing in companies that want to tear down the things you care about. Invest in building up God's kingdom while you grow your wealth. Contact Stonecrop Wealth Advisors today by clicking the link in the description or by calling 610-628-0035. Investment advisory services offered through Stonecrop Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. I didn't get around to this. I listened to more on this topic, but I wanted to get around to rereading some pedo baptism stuff just yeah. because that was very helpful parenting wise. Yeah, definitely. So I, I need to, I just listened to the lectures and I'm very strict with my list. So I would uh-huh. never count it as the book. You'd never count what? Like I, even though I probably covered the content again, it wasn't the book that I was listening to. I was listening to lectures on the topic sort of. Oh thing, yeah. Or, yeah. I wouldn't count that either. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you mean. Um, definitely. I actually, a lot of those kind of books I like to reread as well. The, Jankovic books on parenting, lo- loving the little years, that kind of thing. I reread a lot of short theology books that I like, especially ones that are heavy in practical application, like mm-hmm. Reforming Marriage, Future Men are examples oh, of yeah. books like Elizabeth that. Elizabeth Elliot. I have reread her books too over the years. Not are this there year, any but particular? I, yeah, this next year on my, because I'm trying to do a 40 before 40 list, which uh-huh. I found from Jacqueline Spearing, who got it from Elsie, I think, mm-hmm. at a can't remember what her Instagram is, but anyways, I really want to reread. So keep a quiet heart is one. I actually want to reread her autobiography of Amy Carmichael. Cause that was a really impactful one. I read that when I was pregnant with Ira. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, just really helpful. Oh, and Amy yeah. Carmichael's book. I've reread that one multiple times. So I do yeah. reread. I yeah, guess not do. as often as you do though. I reread a lot of fiction. I don't, know if I could reread fiction. I reread a lot of fiction. I reread Pride and Prejudice, sometimes more than once a year. I reread The Chronicles of Narnia, sometimes more than once a year. And I reread Lord of the Rings, sometimes more than once a year. Those are kind of the big ones that are always, because they are refreshing to me, they help my mind clear. I've from reread Harry work. Potter in Austin, but... I haven't been not, rereading yeah. Harry Potter in a long time either. You need to read other Austin. I didn't realize until you told me a few weeks ago that you've only read that. No, I've read at least one other one. Like well, you Sense need to and read the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like some of the other ones. And, and who's the other? Bronte? Yeah. Well, <sighs> like, yes. Yeah, I've read some of her books too. Elizabeth I, Gaskell, you should read some of that too. I tried to follow the genre a little bit, but, but it almost was bad <laughs> that I started with Pride and Prejudice, which I think is probably the greatest book in this sort of genre that it really harmed. I was like, well, this isn't, this is good. They're all so good though, for that same reason of seeing the female sin issues. Well, they show, that's why I think you'd like the other ones too. Austin, particularly, I think she is so adept at capturing human personas, like people that characters that you've met before, like (laughs) the pastor in pride and prejudice. (coughs) What's his name? Now I'm not going to be able to remember, but the pastor who's I was just like, shall we read Fourth White Sermons after? Anyway, I reread a ton of fiction like that more so than Lexi does. What about, okay, you've been reading Shakespeare well, this year. Trying to, yes. Yeah. Wh- wh- why and how has that been going? Why? We just I had a friend here. 
I've always been passionate about making sure women are cultivating their minds, but I just kind of really like, we have so many young moms that I really wanted to be aware of. Let's not just get obsessed with cloth diapering and making uh-huh. homemade baby food. Let's continue to like put fodder yeah. through so you can keep cultivating this other part of your humanity as a woman. Yeah. Great works of culture and art and history. Yeah. And so I was just, I was kind of co-leading a group with my friend. We we're kind of tag teaming it and we were going to follow the same timeline that the school has been following this year. So it was medieval. Yeah. And we're kind of on a break right now. I'm not sure what's going to happen through the rest of the year because my time is not as available as I thought it would be this year. Yeah. But we've gone through three Shakespeare plays and I told the ladies up front, I said, don't feel bad. Don't give up. If you can't read it, these were written to be seen. So watch them, listen to them, read them and listen to them, have someone read them to you. We've literally had all variety of people get through these plays. Yeah. Um, And I think it's been good for them just to see like they can do it. They can tackle it. Yeah. People should be, I can't remember who it was on Twitter the other day. A pastor I follow said basically like in his opinion, Christians should, it would be a mark of, of high Christian culture if all Christians could read fluently and totally understand without effort um, Shakespeare, the KJV Bible, and basically works in that genre. Yeah, Peter Lightheart's commentary on Shakespeare did convince me that Christians should read it regularly. Yeah. I, I want to keep going. This is, did we read? I guess December is our first month so far not reading, but um, I do want to keep reading it on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So you were reading Shakespeare. You've been reading that alongside other ladies. What other fiction have you been reading? And because I've seen you read a lot I of fiction, I wanted to this do year. more. Yeah, I wanted to go more into the classics this year. I liked Evangeline, that long poem by Longfellow. I mm-hmm. loved that. I, you should read that, Brian. I loved that. That I think yeah. was the first classic that I read this year. That was poetry. But I'm trying to think of what else. I'm still going through Elizabeth. Gaskell's North and South. I hope to finish that by the end of the year. And I hope to finish Gone with the Wind. I, I, yeah. I'm sure I'll finish that by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted to keep reading more of the classics, really. What have you thought so, about Gone with the Wind so far? I love it. I think it's my favorite okay. that I read this year, probably. Yeah. yeah. So you would definitely recommend that. I, it's been over 15 years since I read Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Probably even longer than that. I don't even think you've read it since we were married. I think I might have read it in junior high. Yeah, because you told me in high school that it was one of your favorites. Yeah, it's been a long time. What do you like about Gone with the Wind? That Scarlet is a horrible person. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just that, yeah, like you're frustrated with her the whole time. Yeah. I think that what I like the most about, though, is it's putting history into a living form for me that's more interesting and easy to consume than if I just read a book about that time about, period. Does yeah, that make sense? About civil war. Yeah. So that's been more, it's been infuriating war. to be honest, very to, infuriating multiple times a week. Like she's like, Oh, she's such a brat. Well, cause I'm like, I read oh, she's talking the about. life of Frederick Douglass earlier this year too. And then I read black and tan after that uh-huh. by Doug Wilson. Yeah. And that kind of gave me like, I knew walking away from the Frederick Douglass, like this, Slavery wasn't what we're led to believe it is all the time. So, and then black and tan gave me a completely different outlook on the whole thing. And now gone with the wind is like, well, shoot, (laughs) this is the problem with America still. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. It definitely gives you a different perspective. I've had that experience in different categories this year with my historical research into the first millennium of Christendom, basically. And it's shocking when you start getting into some of these subjects, just how uh, um, not uneducated, miseducated we've been yeah. in the in the narratives that we've come mm-hmm. to believe about. I mean, pick any historical figure, particularly Christian ones. Yeah. Robert E. Lee, um, Stonewall Jackson, Christopher Columbus, Constantine, Charlemagne, Vlad the Impaler. I mean, you can pick <laughs> a lot of these guys and you'll find out that not that they were all perfect and the, the Christians never sinned and they were the white hats and everybody else was all bad, but that you find that there's we have come to be successfully counter-discipled by the world to despise our Christian heritage. And in many ways, it's made us, it's weakened us because we've failed to see the examples of virtue and Christian virtue 
that took place in some of these people in, mm-hmm. in, in ages. Yeah. So and I, I went, definitely recommend I've, that too. I've been trying to find different YouTube videos about Gone with the Wind online. And I, f- I was watching one the other night and he was the tour guide. It was when they were selling off Tara, the house that she grew up in. Uh-huh. They, they're, they were selling it actually in real life. And he mm-hmm. was like the tour guide and they were recording the whole thing. And he was saying more things in Gone with the Wind were actually factual based on the people that lived in this neighborhood than were not. Interesting. Which was very interesting to me because that's been my whole question through the whole thing is how much of this is true? This right. is so horrifying. Yeah. But how much of it is true? Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. What other... So I know I've seen you read other fiction like Lonesome Dove, the Western that was recommended to a couple people, but is that what it's called? Lonesome Dove? Something like that? Yeah, I, I, it kept popping up like the same week. It popped up three or four different times. So it's I a did, long book, I too. I did read that one. It's another six to 800 I've never book. read a Western, so... Yeah, that was really surprising to see you read. <laughs> Have you read Cormac McCarthy? No, because you told me I shouldn't. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very, very dark. Even, he has I think some even Kelly... Twitter Kelly. Kelly, cheerful yeah, reader, cheerful even reader. said recently, don't read it. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> ladies probably don't. Cormac McCarthy does some some really interesting and brilliant things. He captures the depravity of man in the starkness that I've only encountered in um, Russian literature. I was going to say, is he American? American. He okay, died. Then, but, yeah. yeah. He recently died. Uh, he mm. wrote The Road. He wrote No Country for Old Men. He wrote like All the Pretty Horses. He wrote um, Blood Meridian. And I've read a couple of those. <clears throat> they are pretty dark, pretty macabre, and very violent. So, um, yeah, not necessarily, rec- especially when you're postpartum or pregnant, which has been a large portion of our life. I'll be like, oh, yeah, you shouldn't read that right it's now. It's like the other one that I'm listening to while I'm knitting right. at night. What is that book called? Kristen Lavin's, La- Laverne's Daughter. It's like sad. Yeah. It's Misty very... said, don't, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, don't, um, listen to it postpartum. So I was like six months. Is it's, that far enough? But it was still very sad. Like, and I'm a guy. Well, but, you were listening but, to it too. Yeah. Though. I'm like, no, I, I, this is too sad. <laughs> Crime and punishment. Like uh, pastor Burkholder loves Dostoevsky and Russian literature, you know, because it's like the French literature is I will die for love. The, uh, you know, American literature is I will die for glory. And the Russian literature is just, I will die. That's, that's the literally, joke. I, I, I read my first yeah. Russian this year, which was the death of Ivan Ilyich. You haven't read Crime and Punishment yet? No, I want to. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's long, isn't it? It is long. Yeah, Dan told me to read it. But um, Yeah, it's, it's a great book. Yeah. Genuinely a brilliant work. But the brilliance of the work is in how Dostoevsky is able to make you feel the psychology of someone who is trapped in the blackness of sin having justified it and then the guilt eating them away until they find redemption. And it's like, you feel everything that the, the main character feels. And it's So horrible. maybe I'll read it in the spring when I can be outside. Yeah. Kind of like when I listened to Frankenstein, mm-hmm. I was gardening. Yeah. And therefore, although I didn't like Frankenstein. I also, I think, have you read Dracula, Bram Stoker? When I was younger, but okay. I almost wouldn't even count. Yeah. <laughs> Dostoevsky or Crime and Punishment, I think is a good one to listen to because... The narrator is uh, fluent in all the Russian names and stuff. It really helps because mm. I've tried to read Russian literature <laughs> before and I'm like, I'm lost in the sea of names I can't pronounce. And they're not making an imprint on my head enough to remember, to remember that. Yeah. It's not like Stan. It's like Raskonikov. And so I good. forgot that I did read Death Comes for the, for the Archbishop. For the Archbishop. Because Willa Cather is one yeah. of my favorite authors. Yeah. But I hadn't read that one yet. And I know it's Pastor Wilson's one of his favorites. Yeah. Great book. And I cried. And it, I haven't cried in a book since I read A Severe Mercy when uh-huh. I was pregnant with Daphne. And you cried. I bawled and bawled for nights and nights and nights <laughs> in that book. But I, I did cry reading this one. It was very, very good. Yes. yes. I love Willa Cather. <laughs> oh, Alfred. He's crying too. He said, yeah. Okay. So did you have a that. nonfiction that was your favorite? Mine? Mm hmm. This year, actually, all but one were nonfiction oh. were my top okay. because I read so much history. Oh, that makes sense. So the only fiction book that's on my list is actually a reread, and it's I reread that hideous strength mm-hmm. and the the ransom trilogy, and that was like I didn't the first time my first time through the ransom trilogy. I need to reread those now. I, I think I'd understand them better. Yes, it's the, it it helps to reread that series because yeah. they're so different. All three of the books, oh yeah, out of the Silent Planet, Paralandra, and that Hideous Strength, 
they're so different. I mean, one is like traveling to Mars. One of them is like the Garden of Eden replayed on the planet Venus. And then one of them, Merlin, is randomly there and it's in England. Yeah, very. It's very, but that hideous strength. I felt strength, very confused while I was reading. I think some of the things that Lewis did in that hideous strength were brilliant. Um, some of the, th- Lewis does this a lot where you'll have essays or lectures that he gave that he then fictionalizes. And he does that with the inner ring in that hideous strength. So it's one of my favorites, and I think it gets better every time I read it because the f- the three weren't my favorite. At for I appreciated them, Wait, but which they weren't. one is your favorite of the three? That hideous strength is my oh, favorite. Okay. Yeah, of the three because of the <laughs> the arc that he takes start Mark Studdick through and his wife, their relationship, the way he presents that, I think is really fascinating. <laughs> and it's obviously very prescient when it comes to modern um, totalitarian culture and, and that kind of thing. So that was the only fictional book that was on my list this year. And I'm actually looking now, three of the remainders are history or biography, and the other one is theology. Why don't we do that? Theology. You mentioned some Puritan books, but what were some theology books or any that stood out particularly this year that you read? I didn't like the Hodges commentary you had me read. I thought it was boring, but Very I really boring. liked the whatever the commentary was that you and Ben were using yeah. for Sunday school was G.I. Williamson. Yeah, that one seemed better. I didn't read it, but it I seemed the, better. I like them both for different reasons, but uh, Hodges is extremely boring. It's like paint. It's like paint drying. Mm-hmm. Boring, but it's really clear. And we're talking about. We didn't even say it. We're talking about uh, Hodges' commentary on the Westminster Confession of Faith. Yes. And G.I. Yes. Williamson's commentary on the Westminster Confession of yeah. Faith. So now I am just reading through the confession because then I was like, well, yeah. what is the original source material? I should probably just read that. Yeah. So you have to read them by uh, together for sure. Yeah. So you didn't like that one. It, I mean, it was okay. I learned yeah. so, it was kind of like when I read Calvin, I was like, this is kind of boring. I need to read it. Yeah. I, Cause again, I'm trying to recover what are, what are the basics of reformed, the reformed canon sort of yeah. a thing. The history was very interesting in the very beginning when he mm-hmm. traces the history from the reformation to all of the modern denominations. Yeah. That was fascinating. Mm, yeah. I find that fascinating in the front of all of these reformed theology books. I always read the stuff everyone else skips over. Yeah. I probably learned the most from that stuff. I agree. I actually think those are some of the sections in these kinds of books where you get more because they're very concise. Yes. And they give you like a 30. Th- they're, they're almost just trying to orient you before you get in the book. Yeah. And, you, and we're not very oriented no. as a Christian culture. No. So it's very helpful for someone to come in and be like, hey, napkin sketch. Here's where you yeah. came from. Yeah. So um, and I, I kind of started. Oh, what's his name? Paul Johnson. Yeah. The History of Christianity. Uh huh. I kind of started, I got that book and I want to read that this year, but I'm actually just reading the chapter on the Reformation right now, Mm -hmm. just because I found it so interesting, the history from the other introductions that I just wanted to know more about it. So yeah, yeah, I can't think of any other specific theology books. Mm -hmm. For me, the, the theology book, I read a lot of theology books and either in part or in whole, obviously, because it's what I do day in and day out. So the one, though, that, was, that stood out to me the most, not because I love or agree with everything in it, was Michael Heiser's The Unseen Realm. That book is very fascinating in his approach to the Unseen Realm. Is Michael Heiser is like a, he's a, a scholar of ancient Near Eastern languages and religions. So he's done some work in the idea of the Divine Council in the Old Testament, and in uh, basically the nature of the de- of demons and Nephilim, and this is stuff that I would that I was reading and have read a lot of this year for Haunted Cosmos research, and I found it to be really fascinating. I thought uh, Heiser had some really compelling, interesting ideas in those books. He's also very much like on the biblicist to traditionalist side. He's very skeptical of anything traditional, and so I think and and he's not a scholar or a, a theologian when it uh, with a particular expertise or study in areas like um, soteriology or systematic theology. So I found the parts to be very weak where he strayed into those topics like divine sovereignty. Um, I think he was just he to stay in his own. Yeah, life. he was, he was out of his, his, <laughs> Is that his depth. The on one that. we were listening to one of his books on the way to grace agenda. What, we were, 
What's that? We were listening to Reversing Herman. Wasn't that one of his books, uh-huh, right? Which okay. is his book, yeah. Well, another okay. of his books. He wrote Demons, Reversing Herman, okay. Unseen Realm. Yeah, it was interesting. What you might check out if you're interested in, in Heiser is some of the uh, documentaries. They're about an hour long. They're on YouTube that he did with like Logos, the Bible software. Oh, we did watch those, yeah. Because one thing Heiser did is he, he was really interested in the UIP UFO phenomenon. So he would go to UFO conferences and speak. Yeah, that's interesting. And he also is really good at refuting quacks, like the History Channel type quacks, who say basically like the Bible has full of aliens. And look, this <laughs> ancient religion had aliens visiting. And he's like, no, 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 you're, you're ignorant. And he, from the ancient languages, can correct those mistaken notions. So that was the one that was the history book or sorry, that was the theology book that landed on my list just because it was so interesting and so different. Do you often find yourself tired in the mornings? Well, I got news for you. That probably means that you're working really hard and doing great things as unto the Lord. So keep it up. But we at New Christian Press want to help take some of the sting of fatigue away by introducing our brand new coffee roast. That's right, roasted exclusively from New Christendom Press by a small Christian roaster in Southwest Florida. This is premium quality coffee for the every man. And I really do mean that because it doesn't taste like blueberries or fresh parsimons and snootiness. No, 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 nothing like that. It tastes just like coffee, just a good medium roast coffee that you could drink at any hour of the day, black with cream, or maybe with a little bit of sugar in there as well, if that floats your boat. If you're interested in purchasing our GM King's New Christendom Press coffee, go to newchristendompress.com slash coffee today and order your first bag or 10. Again, that's newchristendompress.com slash coffee, or check the links in the description below. Cheers. This wasn't a theology necessarily, but I forgot to mention it. The Natural Family, Where It Belongs. Uh, who is that by? Alan Carlson. He has a couple of other books that I've mm-hmm. seen, but that I've been interested in learning about capitalism. And he's kind of making a case in there that capitalism is not, it is not like biblical in some ways, but he's not arguing from scripture often. Uh-huh. He is just kind of trying to show that capitalism is what got us feminism. In is he ways? talking about like capitalism as it's practiced, corporate capitalism? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, not like a distributist, like Catholics, mm-hmm. but yeah, he doesn't actually, it's definitely like home-based economics, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it was really eye opening to see that even some of the wage, like women having equal wages was because of Republicans, because of capitalism. They knew capitalism could only work if women were outside the home so what does that mean for a, a you know Bible believing Christian to grapple with that reality sort of a thing? Like actual stuff that happened in history, not just saying this, but let's look at the people who were voting and Yeah. So that was very eye opening to me. And it was a it was a good and interesting read. I don't I think I found that maybe through Eric's podcast mm. or something. Or maybe it was That um, sounds King's like something Hall. I don't know. That sounds like an Eric book. Yeah. Eric reads books like that constantly. Where I'm like, I've never even heard of this person. And he, he reads quite a bit of of contemporary literature on yeah on d- all kinds of different political subjects and and business and things like that. I'm I also read Wendell Berry's in the same vein. I read his book Home Economics this year, also, mm-hmm. which I've read a lot of Berry, and I think it's one of my favorite ones that I've read. Yeah, so that was a good one. What what was that one about? Same sort of thing, actually. Like, just how does this work? How do economics work in a family setting, like between a man and a woman? A lot of stuff about marriage, actually. Really, Uh really good stuff about, like, really interesting thoughts about if you're doing your God-given duties as a man and a woman, you will stay attractive to one another. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, lots of really good marriage stuff in there, Yeah, I feel like. Uh, Gender roles. There was a lot of farming stuff, too. Yeah. But, yeah, really, really good. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let me give you my three remaining books here because okay. they all kind of work together. Okay. And and then see if you have any in, in any of these kind of categories. I think I've seen you read some of these categories. But the three other books I have on my list, the first one is, it's a book that I wanted to read from reading two other books. One was History of the American People by Paul Johnson. 
The other one was Albion's Seed, which is a book that traces. You read those again? No, just these are the books oh. that made me want to read this book. Okay. They made me want to read this book and another three volume set that I'm currently reading. So the the Albion Seed traces four British folkways and yeah. how they shaped American culture. Very, very good. I want to re listen to that now that I've finished Gone with the Wind. Super interesting book. Yeah. Scots Irish border culture and how it shaped the South, New England. That's Puritanism a really good and, audio book. It's really long, but it was a great audio. Yeah. You learn a lot about American culture that you had no idea yeah. came from these British folkways. So I, from that book though, and from a history of the American people, I wanted to read more on the Civil War because I hadn't read. I had read much more about World War II in my 20s, many, many books about World War II. Even in my early, like the first, I'm in my early 30s, but even in the 30s, Pat Buchanan read a lot of Churchill, Stephen, um, another Ambrose? historian, Ambrose, Stephen is that, Ambrose. Is, that's the Lewis and Clark guy, I think. Yeah, he wrote a lot. He wrote some World War II stuff oh, too okay. that I read, like on D-Day. Uh, so I wanted to read more, and I and I love biography. So I asked around for the best biography of... Um, Stonewall Jackson. Did you get Rebel Yell? Rebel Yell. Okay. Which is S. C. Gwyn. I was gonna buy it in a physical copy, and then uh-huh. I happened to see on Audible that you had downloaded it. Yeah, I've listened like, to oh, it. Oh, good. I won't. I won't get it then. Yeah, okay. it's and it's a good one. I love listening to history or biography, just like fiction, because I think it brings to life a, a lot of a lot of these kind of works. Historically, people would have be read to like re- listening to a book isn't a weird format. I think people need to understand that, that, for example, if you were studying classical literature in, in a school of rhetoric in first century um, Rome, you would much more likely listen to the vast majority of the works of Cicero or Homer uh, being read to you by somebody in front of the class than you would have everybody have their own copy of the book. So, So it's good. And actually, I think writing is better when it's writers should keep in mind how their prose sounds when it's read aloud. So good books to me are good books that are read aloud. Rebel Yell is fascinating because Stonewall Jackson is such an enig- an enigmatic character. He is just a weird person, <laughs> but like very socially awkward, had a lot of uh, social mm-hmm. foibles and things like that, but he was a man of extraordinary character. You know what? Kind of reminds me of Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt almost opposite personality. Yeah, I know. But, but I mean Yeah, like in terms of virtuous constitution, yes. just like definitely um yeah. Very de- actually almost couldn't get more opposite on their personality. Stonewall Jackson had so much trouble with public speaking that in his church at one point they were like, you know, some of the men would pray aloud in the service and he was so painful at it uh and so like intimidated by it that he sought a meeting with his pastor to ask, like, should I, should I do this? Like, it's, I, I hate it so much, but <laughs> is funny. it my Christian duty? And the oh, pastor was funny. like, yes, it's your Christian. And then he was like, okay. Oh, interesting. And he figured out how to do it. And huh. he was a good husband. Cool. He was a, he was very, he was a, a, an upstanding Christian man in how he, he took some flack for starting um, Christian schools of Christian theology and discipleship for slaves uh, so just, it, but then a brilliant military tactician who foresaw basically moves in terms of modern warfare that he preempted that virtually nobody else had done that became basically the standard way of waging war in the modern era, the civil war being basically the first modern war in a lot of ways. So super fascinating book. Uh, I would highly recommend it. And it's not too long. It's some biographies. Because the human life is such a big thing. I mean, get so in the weeds. This one was very approachable. I did read a couple biographies this year. Yeah. And my favorite was probably <laughs> the Teddy Roosevelt one. Yeah. Which, what was the one you read? Ooh, I think it was called Carry a Big Stick. Uh huh. Do you remember it was the author? George Grant. And oh, the other okay. biography I read was also George Grant. Yeah. And it was The Last Crusader. Yeah. About Columbus. Um, Columbus. Yeah. yeah. They were both really good. But Teddy Roosevelt was my favorite. Um, so much so that I was trying to name Alfred Theodore. But you know what? I do like to name Theodore. said no. So anyways, yeah, worth reading. Both of those are. But he was a. Yeah. I didn't know he was like a Presbyterian. Mm-hmm. You and I seem to have disagreements about. Teddy Roosevelt. So, <laughs> well, Teddy Roosevelt poli- had really terrible politics in and a lot of ways. George Grant seems to 
paint him in a better light than uh-huh. what you would paint him, even given his politics. So, yeah, I don't. I haven't read Grant's biography. Proof that Brian either. and I don't have to agree on everything. No, we don't. We don't. He was I'd also really like Teddy Roosevelt as the a inventor, essentially, of Western literature. So it was kind of funny to then read Western later and think about like Teddy Roosevelt is kind of the reason people in America became obsessed with Westerns mm. because of him. So yeah, I mean, he was people like probably don't realize that though. Maybe they do, but. He was a man's man. I mean, he was. He would go he was out, a cowboy, hunt, and suffer, and that was just what he lived for. And especially starting from such a frail and sickly lad, yeah, an asthmatic. And it's probably why we got involved in more wars that maybe we didn't have any business being involved in. Yeah, that's more where where I <clears throat> Teddy Roosevelt's politics. I think he he was in some ways um, a warmonger. Yeah. On a global scale, because he liked war. Like, <laughs> yes, I would agree with you there. George, and, <laughs> and that's bad. George Grant was more like painting it as he was a man's man. This was a masculine yeah. trait. He was willing to go to the war. He was not, you know. Right. He wasn't like a fight from the from the no, rear. I no. mean, he's like getting shot. And, yeah. yeah. Didn't he also get shot and then deliver a speech? A speech, yes. Because the bullet went through his and speech. He just, and they were like, you have to stop. He's like, no. He said, There's some witty line that he says, yeah. essentially. and. Like, okay, well, on my bad day, if Teddy Roosevelt could give a speech after having been shot, With then a I bullet. can do this thing right now I don't want to do. In his chest. His speeches were also that long. Yes. That written out, they were able to slow a bullet down enough to keep it from being fatal. Do you have more books? Because my arm is Yeah, two more. Off. Okay. <laughs> totally related. God's Battalion by Rodney Stark. Sword and Scimitar by Raymond Ibrahim. And then one I haven't um, picked up yet, but I'm going to Defenders of the West. Raymond Ibrahim is kind of a follow-up. These are books about the Crusades. I think everybody should read them. And uh, Okay, so those are the only books on your horizon right now that are oh, coming up in 2024? No. Oh, what's coming up in 2024? Oh, what's coming up? Yeah. So Defenders of the West certainly is coming up. Anything else you plan to read next? Oh, year, that's... Specifically. I, gotcha. Hmm. The Severe Mercy? Finally? I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was coming up. <laughs> If people have been listening long <laughs> enough, maybe they've picked up on it. They'll remember how many <laughs> times Lexi's. I listen. I I will read a severe mercy no, in twenty twenty four. Really? Yes. Really. Right hearth listeners have Ryan, heard it. It's right out there on the shelf. Now I have to do it. I will. Really? I will I'm read. In, I've told you before. I can't, it would, who wrote it? I told you. Uh, one of C.S. Lewis's friends. I can't remember his name right now. Okay. It would make great premarital counseling. Mm-hmm stuff okay you heard it here first folks i'm gonna read a <laughs> severe know. mercy this know. is only big news to lexi not <laughs> not anybody else yeah so th- that that wraps up for me any any other books you wanted to mention i well i i'm gonna i hope one of my first books to finish is misty's new book that i'm super oh yeah about. what's what's the name of it again uh simplified organization i think Mm-hmm. I can't remember if it's simplified organization or simply organized. Misty and is my hands are full of people and yeah, microphones. It's fine. If you've heard us say organize your attitude or you uh, know, she wrench, finally put like her Misty. curriculum into a book and yeah. I'm so excited about it. And Misty it's Winkler. so helpful. Yes. I've I have been following her for like ten years, reading everything for that long, and I'm still reading this book and finding new things and it's yeah. really helpful. So super I, that'll probably because it's January. You yeah. know, everyone gets organized in January. I'm gonna try and finish that one first. The other one that I have out there, actually, it's coming in the mail. Is um, the discarded image? I'm oh yeah, read it. Ben yeah. keeps telling me to read it. Lewis. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, yeah, that is really good. So that's coming, and then <sighs> I'm actually rereading Edith Schaefer's "What Is a Family" right now. Uh-huh. Really super helpful. That's on my forty before forty, <laughs> and then I have some other design books that I w- need to want to get through. Yeah, I'm still reading Christopher Alexander's "A Pattern Language." I've been reading that. Two pages a day, every single day this year. And it's just so long that I didn't finish it this year. Yeah, sure. So. We'll have to check back in 2024. Yep. There you go. All right, guys. Well, that's all we've got. So uh, go pick up some books for your loved one or uh, just for yourself. Go pick up a book, get reading. And hopefully we've added a few to your list. If you didn't already have these ones on your library shelf. Um, Reminder, conference coming up. Singles mixer at the conference. Ladies are a dollar, and the guys uh, are covering basically the cost with their with their ticket. So head to newchristenandpress.com and click on the conference button in the menu there. If you want more info on that coming up, 
Make sure that you guys go check out Indigo Sundry Soap Company and all of the great products that they're making. Soap without seed oils, hormone disruptors, phthalates, whatever. All that stuff is that you don't want to rub all over yourself. And uh, pick up some of their... They've got great packages, 5-bar deal, 10-bar deal that are great to get a sample of what, they, of what they're up to. I really like the Cambrian Blue Clay. It's probably my favorite one so far that I've tried. Yeah, guys, thanks for making this a great year uh, together here on Bright Hearth. We hope that you tune in in 2024. We'll be picking back up sometime in the first week or two of 2024 with the next episode for you guys. But Lord bless you. Fest in Alente. Make haste slowly. And we'll catch you next time on Bright Hearth. <laughs>